architecture is a convergence of discrete networks into a single integrated system. The elements of this system can be expressed through a tectonic language driven by the processes of the network. As a vehicle for the exploration of process-driven tectonics, this thesis examines the role of the architect in the design of civil infrastructure. Countries on every corner of this earth now recognize that energy supplies are growing scarcer. Energy demands are growing larger and rising energy use imperils the planet we will leave to future generations. And that's why the world is now engaged in a peaceful competition to determine the technologies that will power the 21st century. From China to India, from Japan to Germany, nations everywhere are racing to develop new ways to produce and use energy. As the world approaches the post-hydrocarbon age, emerging forms of alternative power generation have begun to focus on the free and irreducible resources, harnessing the power of sunlight, water, air, and earth, the resources over which future wars will be fought. Power is the means to flourish in the face of adversity, the spectacular display of the unhinderable civilization. Power is natural resources, and the current resource infrastructure is fragile susceptible to catastrophic failure. A new and robust infrastructural network is required, a decentralized system that integrates resource infrastructure into the urban fabric. Historically, the power plant has been seen as a monumental object, tied to the grid, but standing alone in the landscape, discrete from the primary center of energy consumption it serves in this historical model, the plant serves only as a generator, invisible to the city, with little or no power to promote civil or economic development. This thesis seeks to explore the potential of new forms of power generation as the foundation of a decentralized infrastructural model, to see energy as the mode of political, economic, and military power by which a civilization expands, and to pose the question, what is a power plant? Right now, a power plant is a program that isn't designed by architects, and why should it be? Now, one example of a power plant is the geothermal power plant, which we went out and visited several of these, out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there is nothing around and so these things are designed with nothing to interact with. Uh, no one goes out there except for the few people who work out there. And it shows. It's a machine laid out on the ground. But no one wants to live next to a machine. But the machine is a perfect opportunity to explore the notion of process-driven tectonics in a physical network. Every infrastructural network that is essential to the city is in some way tied to the production and consumption of energy. Power, water, agriculture, and waste management are independent networks which require unique layers of infrastructure in the city. But a closer look reveals that each of these systems has components and processes in common with the others. The four discrete systems become intertwined forming a network of interoperable components. What we found was that there were some really compelling reasons to integrate these systems. The geothermal power plant has an entire water cleaning system required for it and cooling system. Water reclamation can really take advantage of this by basically beefing up that system, which allows the water to also cool down to a point where you can then use the algae that's in the water reclamation system anyway to be fed by hot water, which is the way that algae grows the fastest. So not only are you cleaning the water, you're creating biofuel, and you're making the geothermal power. And if you're not integrating these systems, then you're just not running as efficiently. The notion of an urban power plant is nothing new to architecture. Though the power plant is typically thought of 
As an engineer's task, architects have been involved in the design of many of these projects, particularly in urban areas. But in every case, the strategy is the same. I added some fins to lower wind resistance, and this racing stripe here I feel is pretty sharp. Agreed. First prize. We looked at what architects had already done in the past, and what we found was they all pretty much enclosed the power plant. Let's hide it. We wanted to find a way to celebrate the process, and we wanted to make something that would be the machine. And I think what we ended up making was a cathedral to the industrial process. Multifunctional tectonic components allow the process and the building to become one and the same. A thickened skin system that integrates the water treatment process by moving water between flexible bladders through hydraulic pressure. Structural elements with embedded steam tanks process the hot geothermal fluid. And circulation systems that route steam and fluid throughout the plant. Together, these tectonic systems create a habitable environment within the workings of the plant itself. You know, people can connect the steam directly to the plants growing, yeah, exactly. um, which can be even tropical, really, because of the temperature. Right. Year-round, you would get life connected to the steam, whereas that looks like death. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. The stuff is rising. It gets caught in a net, essentially, along that surface of the grating that forms droplets that then channel down to the bottom, or, you know, some kind of capillary action can be pushed on top or it can drip down and grow off the side. In a typical geothermal plant, hot water from deep in the earth is piped up to the surface and travels through a series of steam tanks. The water is then cleaned, cooled, and re-injected into the earth to be reheated. Steam generated by the hot water is collected and used to power a turbine which produces electricity. Additional structures are also needed to house the control rooms and administrative offices required to operate the plant. In the integrated power plant, the water cleaning systems are replaced by the thickened skin. Within this skin, chambers of variable size accommodate the various stages of water reclamation. Larger spaces are introduced that can be inhabited by the employees of the plant. Water and power distribution lines run through the sewer system below the city. By connecting to the sewer, the plant can incorporate wastewater treatment for the municipal water supply into those required by the geothermal system. The mechanical components of the energy systems are integrated into structural columns which elevate the skin system, dividing the site into three datums. The habitable cloud above contains the control room and administrative offices. The infrastructural layer below interfaces with the city's existing supply lines. And a semi-enclosed interior space creates a microclimate suitable for the cultivation of agriculture. Algae is grown in the top layer of the skin, accelerating wastewater treatment and producing biofuel, which can be burned to produce additional energy. Steam from the geothermal system is vented from the floor below and collects on the underside of the skin, creating a high humidity environment for the growth of exotic plants. All right, this idea of the decentralized network is not actually anything new, which I'm sure everyone's familiar. But it doesn't just go back as far as one thinker or another thinker. It's where it started. When Edison first designed the idea of having a power grid, it was designed to be a decentralized grid. It makes sense if you have a network that you need a lot of nodes in order to have a robust network. Uh, so... Actually, what we're, what we're suggesting is that 
the idea that started it is really where it's going to go. And this is how to get there. The first power plant built by Edison Electric provided energy to the surrounding community and used waste heat to heat nearby buildings. The Edison business model was set up around the idea of decentralized energy, independent generators that served small communities. As new utilities emerged, they followed the same business model. Each utility was a monopoly that owned the generators, the power lines, and even the light bulbs in customers' homes. Links between the independent grids were established as an emergency backup, but were never intended to carry heavy load. When Congress instituted regulations that forced power companies to buy electricity from new independent providers, the utilities became middlemen, buying energy from the lowest bidder and rerouting it to the customer, sometimes across thousands of miles. The grid now depended on the weak links between systems that had evolved independently. These links were not built to support the rising demand for power. The modern energy grid has become a centralized system. Utilities all share the same transmission lines, and any improvement of the infrastructure benefits competitors. Utilities have no incentive to invest in infrastructure. As a result, the grid has fallen into disrepair. Behold! The power plant of the future today! At first, when we looked at this project, we thought that it would need to be government funded. The amount of money put into power stations and put into power transmission lines and put into all the infrastructure that supports the infrastructure, it actually comes out to where doing it this way is possibly economically feasible even for a commercial interest. The current system's not working. And whether it is government subsidiaries or government incentives or actually a government power plant, if it needs to go in the city, it can't ignore its neighbors. Then you instantly start to deal with PR. And I think that BP has seen how PR matters. And if you can change the image of power production from death to life, you, then you change its value in a city. And now you don't want to live far away from it, but you want to actually live near it. I mean, when a power plant can become a tourist destination, I think you're really on to something. As the mode of transportation was the primary driver of settlement patterns and urban development in the second half of the 20th century, let the emergence of the United Resource Network be the driver of the 21st. <laughs>